Today, mankind is in the period of interglaciation, that is, in the period between ice ages. Icebergs are high on the poles, Greenland and Antarctica. However, sudden increase of industrial and other human activities in the 20th century brought about the increased use of all the resources, especially fossil fuels, like coal and oil, and uncontrolled pollution of the atmosphere causing climate changes and rising of the sea level. Due to human activities, sudden increase of the surface air temperature was registered in the 20th century. Because of that, it is estimated that anthropogenic climate changes, together with natural changes, can cause dramatic processes in climate system with extremely unfavorable consequences on living world on our planet in the forthcoming ages. Infinity attracts me by a strange force. And I want to grasp the whole universe and to spread its light to every corner. This is the story of extraordinary life of a genius that traveled in his mind through space and time, for millions of years to the future and also to the past, and solved the mystery of ice ages of the planet Earth. The house where I was born is near the Danube. My father Milan married my mother Elisaveta in 1879. God gave them twins, my sister Milena and myself. I was not five yet, when my father showed me money and taught me to calculate with it. That is how I acquired my first knowledge of mathematics. I learned to count to 20 by experience and to count to million by logical thinking. We did not have any hints of the illness of our father. He died when I was eight. His mother's brother, Uncle Vasilye, took all the care about little Milutin. In his native Dal, the boy finished primary school privately and he was educated by governesses. Milutin attended high school Realna in Osijek and kept the position of the best student in the class throughout the seven years of education. At that time, a young teacher, doctor of philosophy, Vladimir Varichak, started teaching in Realna High School in Osijek. He taught me to think exactly and speak clearly. I was enabled to learn by myself and to attain knowledge as a safe foundation for building multiple floors over it. In 1896, Milankovic left for Vienna and enrolled at the VNS Polytechnical School where mathematics was taught by famous professor Emanuel Zuber. My admiration was boundless. From the tower of St. Stephen Church, the town could be seen as if on a plate. I encircled with my eyes everything that has been built in Vienna in the past five centuries and understood that I moved from a simple patriarchal community to a different world. After successfully passing all the exams, Milankovic chose his professional vocation. He devoted himself to the studying of building mechanics, but at the same time, he felt compelled to widen the scientific area he studied. Working on the project of arched bridge with Professor Brick, I studied more closely a type of curve. Already then, I realized the importance of that curve and the possibility to subject its properties to a strict mathematical analysis, and that has not been done before. Milankovic made that very curve the topic of his PhD dissertation. He thought that his solution would give a real contribution to the science. In 1904, Milankovic defended his doctoral dissertation titled A Theory of Pressure Lines, 
and in his 25th year became a doctor of technical sciences, the first of all Serbs. That doctoral year was crucial for his intellectual development and later scientific work. At the beginning of 1905, Milankovic started working in building company of Baron Adolf Pittel. In designing offices of Baron Pittel, he excelled as an engineer with the best qualification in designing concrete constructions. He had prominent results in the building of domes, bridges, power plants and viaducts throughout the Austria-Hungary Empire. Soon followed the two of his patent in the field of reinforced concrete and he managed to build great ceiling planes by using it. In Belgrade, the company was represented by Jan Milankovic. On a tender, the company of Baron Pittel was given the project of the construction of the Sava Collector. At that time, he was even interested with the task of the reconstruction of one wing of high technical school in Vienna, which was an immense recognition to a young expert. In his free time, on vacations in a native Dal, Milankovic studies astronomy and celestial mechanics. From the bank of the Danube, I could see the whole celestial hemisphere in its full glory. I directed my gaze to celestial firmament and pondered its stars. I did not worry about collecting money, but rather about collecting knowledge. I could allow my thoughts to soar freely. Milankovic receives the invitation from the Philosophical Faculty of Belgrade University to come to Belgrade as lecturer. I was faced with a dilemma. Is my duty to live, work and die among my native people who offer me what they can? Milankovic returns his Austrian citizenship and accepts Serbian citizenship. In 1909, Milankovic takes the train to Belgrade. That day marked the end of the period of 30 years of my living in Habsburg monarchy. Coming to Belgrade, I returned to my people and my family. He was accepted as a lecturer on the chair of applied mathematics that encompassed the subjects of rational mechanics, theoretical physics and celestial mechanics. I was enchanted with the very title of the Chair of Applied Mathematics. The very three branches of exact science that I studied most and that could give me, taken together, wide possibilities for such scientific work that I wanted and where I could, as I taught, create great works. Immediately after arriving to Belgrade University, Milankovic started to search for the orientation of his entire future work. In order to acquire a clear survival of the origin, development and mutual position of inorganic natural sciences, Milankovic drew a picture that showed three concentric circles. The surface of inner circle represented the area of mathematical sciences. That circular area is encircled by the ring of exact natural sciences, rational mechanics, celestial mechanics, astronomy, physics and chemistry. And around it was the area of descriptive natural sciences, meteorology, geophysics, geology, mineralogy and geography. Watching that scheme, I remember the words of great philosopher Kant, that in each natural science, the extent of present true science corresponded to the extent of mathematical science present. I drew in the center of my picture a symbol of the sun. Its rays illuminated all exact sciences known so far, but only started to enter the area of descriptive natural science. I decided to peer into these bordering sciences and started from meteorology. Celestial mechanics teaches that mutual attractions of the planets change the shapes and orbits of their paths. Seemingly slightly, but in the course of ages, it becomes all the more noticeable. These gradual, age-long changes of the path elements of the planets are called secular changes. Because of them, the tilt of the Earth's axis in relation to the plane of its orbit is gradually changed. Durations of annual seasons change as well as annual insulation direction of our planet. 
That is why Milankovic called this first part of the cosmic problem he studied his astronomic work. The link between the Earth insulation and the temperature created by solar rays on its surface and in its atmosphere, Milankovic named a second physical part of cosmic problem. One of the main reasons why nobody has tried yet to create a mathematical theory of climate is undoubtedly the fact that this issue requires the solution of the whole range of complicated problems from the area of spherical geometry, celestial mechanics and theoretical physics. At the very beginning of his calculations, he discovered that the quantity of insulation of surface parts of each planet, also of the Earth, depend on three parameters of its very orbit. Distance of perihelion from the point of vernal equinox, obliquity of rotation axis and eccentricity of the Earth's ecliptic orbit around the Sun. Astronomer Johannes Kepler was the first who proved in the 17th century that the Earth in its orbital path in certain moment comes to the point that is closest to the Sun. That point is called perihelion and then the Earth is approximately 147 million kilometers far from the Sun. The opposite point to perihelion is aphelion, the point at the greatest distance when the Earth is 152 million kilometers away from the Sun. On its orbit around the Sun, the Earth reaches twice a year the points that are on equal distance from our star. These are called equinoxes. Equinox points in time change their position. It takes 22,000 years for such a point to travel the full circle. This cycle of circular movement of the equator pole around the ecliptic pole during 22,000 years is called precession cycle. The other element of the solution of the problem of ice ages is connected to the obliquity of the Earth's rotation axis towards the ecliptics. Milankovic discovered that the change of the obliquity of the Earth's rotation axis is of extraordinary importance for climate change. The angle of the Earth's rotation axis with its vertical axis amounts today to 23.5 degrees, but that angle changes in time. When the obliquity of the rotation axis is greater than 23.5 degrees, polar areas receive greater amount of heat, the ice is receding and remaining on the areas belonging to higher geographic latitudes, that is, areas around the North Pole. When, however, the obliquity of the Earth's rotation axis is less than 23.5 degrees, polar areas receive smaller amount of heat from the Sun, the ice from the North expands towards the South, and, to put it simply, the Ice Age occurs. Applying his mathematical tool, Milankovic discovered periods that correspond to present time of 41,000 years, during which the obliquity of the axis changes in the range of 21.5 degrees to 24.5 degrees. The third element of the solution of the problem of Ice Ages relate to the eccentricity of the Earth's path around the Sun. The Earth's path around the Sun changes in time, from approximately circular to ellipsoid shape. These changes range from 0% to 5%, and that, according to Milankovic calculations, occurs in cycles of around 100,000 years. Precession, variability of the obliquity of the Earth's rotation axis, and variability of the eccentricity of its orbit represent three dominant cycles that define climate on the planet Earth. Today they are known in science as Milankovic cycles because he defined their periodization. Milankovic thought that it should be possible to mathematically express the distribution of solar radiation, that is, insulation, on the surface of various planets. In practice, this task has been exceptionally difficult. Planets rotate around their axes, circulate around the Sun, swing and precipitate, and each of their movements has a definite influence on the radiation they receive from the Sun. I knew that this work would not be easy and that it would last for years. That did not intimidate me. I was young. Better to say, in the best years for such an undertaking. In 1940, the Austria-Hungary Empire attacked the Kingdom of Serbia without declaration of war. 
The First World War found Milutin Milanković on his honeymoon in his native house in Dal. He had just married young Hristina Topuzović. As a citizen of Serbia, he was arrested and interned in the concentration camp in Nezder in Hungary. Jailer went out, turning twice the key on the iron doors of my cell. I looked around the cell and started to take in my new social circumstances. In my hand luggage that I brought with me were my already printed or only started works on my cosmic problem. I started looking over my papers and began writing and calculating. I felt very satisfied. It was long after midnight when I stopped my work. Looking around the cell, I wondered where I was. It seems to me like an overnight stay on my travel through the cosmos. Until the year 1917, Milankovic completed the description of present climate on the Mars and Venus and finalized his work on the book where he recorded his research on mathematical basis of the science on cosmic radiation. The war ended in 1918. Milankovic, with work results of four years, returned on a steamship home to Belgrade. In spite of the World War, he achieved his second target, mathematical expression of present climate on the Earth, Mars and Venus. Milankovic's book was translated in French and published in Paris in 1920 under the title Mathematical Theory of Thermal Events Caused by Solar Radiation. Immediately after its publishing, meteorologists recognized this work as a significant contribution to the study of contemporary climate. Well-known German climatologist Vladimir Koppen and his son-in-law, geophysist Alfred Wegener, were the first to realize the advantages that Milankovitch insulation curve might have on paleoclimatological research. The special recognition was rendered to Milankovic in 1924, when Koppen and Wegener included these ideas in the monography on climate of a geological past. With these two scientists, Milankovic works on the theory of the shifting of Earth's rotation poles and writes a series of papers for Koppen's Guide on Climatology and also for Gutenberg's Guide on Geophysics, written by Wegener. Meanwhile, as a representative of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovens, Milutin Milankovic participates in 1923 in the Pan-Orthodox Congress in Constantinople. On that occasion, he proposed an almost perfect solution of the reform of Julian calendar, departing from Gregorian calendar by only one day, not before the year 2800. After full hundred days of incessant work, I completed my calculations and made graphical presentation of the results. My diagram consisted of three jagged lines with straight sections and each showed the change in the past 650,000 years of summer insulation of the parallels on 55, 60 and 65 degrees of the northern geographic latitudes. Milankovic thus completed in 1930 the third target of his scientific plan. The magnitude of his undertaking can be best shown by the fact that Milankovic, known as a systematic and precise man, worked on it continually for around 15 years. In the 30s, Milankovic worked on the attainment of his fourth target, calculation of the measure of ice cover reaction to the given insulation change. In 1938, he published his results titled New Results of Astronomic Theory of Climate Changes. Geologists now had a graph for finding bordering altitudes of ice covers for any period in the last 650,000 years. After attaining all of the four targets of his scientific work, Milankovic was convinced of having solved his cosmic problem. Disputes followed, and many European scientists claimed that the origin of ice ages was not prevailingly astronomic, while other scientists defended Milankovic's theory. All that gave me the idea to collect all my past works on paleoclimatic problem and publish them as a separate manuscript. 
1939, he started working on a great synthesis of his theory, his capital work, Canon of Insulation of the Earth, and its application on the problem of ice ages. The Canon contains the entire Milankovitch lifelong work and reflects all of his scientific thorough, systematic and determined efforts. Canon of Insulation of the Earth was published in Serbian in 1948 and Milankovic's astronomic theory of climate was included in the curriculum of Belgrade University. In 1954, I received an official letter from the rector of the Great Technical School in Vienna, informing me that soon there would be the 50th anniversary of my award of the Doctor of Technical Sciences granted by them. The master of the secrets of the Earth insulation, traveler through distant worlds and times, died in his 80th year on 12 December 1958 at his home in Belgrade. He was buried in his native Dal on the banks of the Danube. Milankovic died without receiving the full recognition of his theory that was disputed by a part of scientific community for a long time. After many years of negation and dispute, more than a decade after his death, a new life of Milutin Milankovic started. In 1965, after taking images of the dark side of the moon, the side not visible to us, Soviet scientists gave to a crater the name of Serbian scientist Milutin Milankovic. That decision was later also approved by International Astronomic Union, that later gave to a crater on the Mars the name of Milankovic, as well as the platinoid 1605, discovered by Belgrade astronomers Protic and Djurkovic in 1982. Facts gathered in the time pointed to the accuracy of his calculations. Besides the results of numerous experiments in the world, a group of scientists in our country also verified the presence of Milankovic cyclists by the research of the characteristics of loose profile caught in the old Slankamen in Serbia. Finally, international project Climb Up definitely confirmed Milankovic insulation cycles and it was published in the most prominent global scientific journal, Science, in 1977. Similarly to Koppen's belief in 1922, that Milankovic theory can be a priceless tool in the research of ancient climates. Contemporary science also realizes that future climate cannot be studied or forecasted without it. In the new millennia, science will also continue to unravel the mysteries of the development of climate changes on the planet Earth in the hope of securing a safer future for the mankind. Lifelong work of this great Serbian scientist will surely contribute to a great extent to that safer future. It will be remembered that Milutin Milankovic traveled through distant worlds and times, cleared the path to the solution of the secrets of ice ages. Thank you.